From the first use of a boat in 8000 BC, we have been fascinated by the monsters from a world so deep that you can't touch it. Our curiosity has not diminished at all. We found new ways to go deeper than ever before and discover what's there. Thanks to equipment like sonar, camera, and speedboat for us, here are 20 creepiest things found in the ocean. Number 20. Terrifying underwater shark statue at Lake Neuchâtel in Switzerland. It's actually kind of doofy looking. I practically leaped scrolling over this, and it's the worst thing I've ever seen on this sub. Those incisors? What's with this strange cartoony but too realistic at the same time? What's the murky green water I'm picturing it emerging from? Those soulless, scary eyes? Did I mention the massive, not quite shark-like teeth resemble a cross between an anglerfish and a T-Rex? Head over to the shores of Lake Neuchâtel in Switzerland and you'll find something you don't often see. There's an ancient looking statue of a shark in the depths with its jaws open wide. The site is set in Central Europe and has attracted travelers for years with its mysterious beauty. The statue has been on the lake near Neuchâtel since it was created in the 19th century. The lake is rich in fossils, so people have been fascinated by it for decades. The statue was a full underwater sculpture, so its creators had to use all the latest diving equipment from that time to make it look like an actual underwater animal. Experts say that the statue was so realistic that many divers thought they were in danger when they saw it beneath them. Today, the statue is an interesting tourist spot where people can visit on boats and enjoy the mysterious beauty surrounded by water at Lake Neuchâtel in Switzerland. Number 19. Apollo Rocket Engines Discovered on the Ocean Floor Towards the end of the 1960s and the start of the 1970s, multiple Apollo rockets were launched into orbit around the Earth and Moon, and the engines that powered each of the launcher's first stages crashed to the ocean floor, presumed to be lost forever. Because of Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos and his privately funded operation, they were finally retrieved. The parts were discovered in 2012 and underwent a two-year restoration before being displayed at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. It's unclear why Bezos would want to invest millions of dollars of his own money in the project, but some press speculated that he did so because he could. Then, over a year ago, Bezos claimed that his private and secret expedition had discovered what they thought were the engines from the 1969 Apollo 11 mission, which kicked off the trek to land the first humans on the moon. One small step for man. Jeff Bezos revealed his plans to recover F-1 engines to us. Jeff and his crew have announced the recovery of two Saturn V's powerful first-stage engines from the ocean's depths. They discovered a tangled pile of F-1 engine pieces strewn across the ocean floor at a depth of more than 14,000 feet using remotely operated vehicles. Number 18. Hidden Underwater River Flowing Under the Ocean in Mexico a secret underwater river called Cenote Angelita, Spanish for Little Angel, can be reached after a 10 to 15 minute drive south of Tulum in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. It's a site. A thin layer of hydrogen sulfate separates the salt water from the fresh water above it. Allowing scuba divers to swim through this underwater creation, which resembles a regular river on the surface. There are also fallen branches and leaves on both sides of the shores, adding to the surreality of this natural occurrence. Cenotes are deep natural pits or sinkholes found in Mexico formed by the collapse of limestone bedrock, exposing water currents beneath. When you look down from the surface, all you see is deep blue ocean. Around 18 meters, or 60 feet, you'll notice what appears to be a peculiar wispy bottom with a few ghostly, bare-limbed tree trunks and branches protruding. As the fog clears, you start to feel the first signs of narcosis while also seeing an expanse of wispy fog below. At the peak of the cloud, you come to a halt and look about. Everything appears strange, and the nitrogen heightens a weird sense in your brain. Number 17. Wreckage of World War II Aircraft Carrier Found in the South Pacific Ocean Researchers have discovered the remains of the aircraft carrier USS Hornet three miles below the South Pacific Ocean. More than 75 years after it sank in a World War II fight, the Hornet was involved in several important military events, notably the Doolittle Raid on Japan and the decisive Battle of Midway. Its final resting site has remained a mystery since it sank. Using the research vessel Petrel, an expedition crew led by Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen has been searching for historically significant shipwrecks. In October 1942, the Hornet was sunk by Japanese forces during the Battle of Santa Cruz Island. 
The ship was extensively damaged by Japanese bombers and torpedo planes, forcing the crew to abandon the ship. A second torpedo attack launched by two Japanese destroyers, the Hornet was eventually sunk. According to Navy history, it was commissioned for barely over a year. The Santa Cruz battle was a Japanese triumph, but at a very steep cost, with the loss of the Hornet and heavy damage to Enterprise. According to retired Rear Admiral Samuel Cox, Director of the Naval History and Heritage Command, about half of the Japanese planes involved were shot down by the US Navy's anti-air defenses, which had been significantly strengthened. As a result, the Japanese carriers did not fight another battle for nearly two years. Number 16. Underwater Crucifix in Petoskey an Italian white marble crucifix, the only known freshwater underwater crucifix, can be found 800 feet offshore and under 21 feet of water. It arrived in Petoskey in a roundabout way in 1962 and has become a popular diving and tourist destination. There is no other shrine like it in the United States. In 1962, the Wyandotte Bay Superior Marine Divers Club put an 11-foot tall crucifix in the bay near the Petoskey break wall at Bayfront Park, featuring a 5-foot, five 5-inch five figure of Jesus Christ. It was built to commemorate Charles Raymond, a Southgate diver who drowned in Torch Lake. Later, the club broadened the scope of the memorial to include all individuals who had died at sea. It was created in remembrance of Gerald Shapinsky by a bereaved mother and father from Rapson in Michigan's Thumb area in the late 1950s. Gerald was 15 years old when he was slain with a shotgun on the family farm in 1956. The cross was fractured during transportation of the Rapson Catholic Church after being constructed in Italy. Thus, it was sold in an insurance sale to the Wyandotte Dive Club. The crucifix arrived in Little Traverse Bay on August 12, 1962, set 1,200 feet off the Petoskey break wall by the U.S. icebreaker Sundew. Number 15. Aqaba's New C-130 Hercules Wreck A C-130 Hercules transport plane was sunk close off the coast of Aqaba, Jordan on November 16th in front of the journalists, politicians, and a brass band. The Hercules was sunk in a fairly accessible area, not far from the wreckage of the Cedar Pride and only a few meters away from the N-42 Duster, an anti-aircraft vehicle also known as the tank. The Hercules is erect and almost level, with a length of 30 meters and a wingspan of roughly 40 meters, an average maximum depth of around 16 meters, and a flat bottom. Only the weakest currents affect the location, and descending into the wreck is facilitated by the superb Red Sea visibility, which means it is virtually always visible from the surface. Even if they were intentionally sunk as artificial reefs, like the C-130 Hercules, aircraft wrecks always have a strange aura. Although no one would dispute that ships belong in the sea any more than aircraft, ships are at least submerged in their natural environment. In contrast, the nose cone of an airplane looming above you gives the dive a strange sensation. Number 14. Divers find truck linked to 1993 missing person case. Maynard Cohen's body has yet to be identified, but a discovery by two divers this week could close the Prosser men's 1993 disappearance. Courtney and John Talbot were scuba diving at Hat Rock State Park's marina when they came across an unexpected find. A red pickup truck submerged 20 feet beneath the sea, just past the pier of the popular Umatilla County Recreation Spot. Police established that the truck belonged to Cohen, a Prosser, Washington resident missing since 1993. Under Sheriff Jim Littlefield of Umatilla County said they discovered Cohen's wallet and identity and bone remains inside the truck. He said the remains had been given over to the medical examiner's office, but he doesn't know how long it would take to identify them. The water in the marina is muddy and it's not a place they dive normally. Something else showed up instead of the boat propeller. The Talbots discovered a truck with deteriorated red paint and a clogged bed with garbage and mud, but otherwise in decent shape. They didn't have much thought of it at first until it was discovered that it's a remain from 1993. Number 13. New Jersey's Deep Sea Train Graveyard Archaeologists uncovered a train graveyard off the shore of New Jersey, where two rare locomotives from the 1850s were preserved beneath 90 feet of water. The two steam engines sinking remains a mystery. There is no evidence in history that they were ever built, and no evidence that they were ever lost. The engines were believed to have been lost in a storm five miles off the coast of Long Beach, New Jersey. On their way from Boston to the Mid-Atlantic, experts believe they either fell off the barge or were purposefully pushed off to save the ship from sinking in strong waves. 
Despite being encrusted with 160 years of rust, they are extremely well kept. It seemed like they were racing across the bottom. Imagine them on rails at a station, steam gushing out of the valves with passengers and luggage on the platform. One option is to raise both locomotives to the surface and rehabilitate them. The locomotives are uncommon Planet Class 222T types that were only manufactured for a short time before becoming outdated almost as soon as they were built. When steam engines weighed 35 tons, these were fully loaded, self-contained 15 tons locomotives. Number 12. The San Jose Think again if you thought treasure-laden sunken shipwrecks could only be found in pirate stories. A sunken Spanish ship lies at the bottom of the Caribbean, off the coast of Colombia, and it's packed with gold. A staggering $22 billion in gold. On June 8, 1708, the 62-gun, three-masted ship known as the San Jose sank. All 600 people on board and gold, silver, and emerald jewels were carried to the ocean's bottom, where they would remain for the next 300 years. The ship's location was unknown until the WHOI, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. in Massachusetts was able to take photos that pinpointed San Jose in more than 600 meters of water. The debris was partially buried in sediment, but we could discern new details in the wreckage thanks to camera photographs from the lower altitude missions. The quality was good enough to pick out the ornamental carving on the guns. The treasure has been the focus of legal conflicts between numerous nations and private enterprises, which is unsurprising. Since then, UNESCO, the United States nation's cultural agency, has urged Colombia not to exploit the wreck for economic gain. Even though its specific location is still a state secret, anyone up for a treasure hunt? Number 11. Antikythera Shipwreck Treasures the Antikythera wreck contains a wreckage of a Greek freight or commercial ship from the 1st century BCE. During the spring, the wreck was first encountered in 1900 by some Greek sponge divers on their way to Tunisia who took shelter on the island during a storm and decided to look for sponges while waiting for the weather to quiet down. One diver discovered the wreck at a depth of 40 to 50 meters. It lay at the crossroads of the Aegean and Mediterranean seas, on the east side of the Greek island of Antikythera near Crete. The sponge boat captain told Greek officials about what they had discovered in November of that year. And the Navy deployed two ships to assist in the recovery attempts which lasted until 1902. The excavation yielded many artifacts, which are now on display in Greece's National Archaeological Museum in Athens. Three life-size marble horses, coins, jewelry, glassware, and hundreds of works of art, including a seven-foot-tall colossus figure of Hercules, were among the items discovered. Jacques Cousteau was asked to inspect the wreck more than 70 years later. Hundreds more items, as well as the bones of four persons, were discovered by his crew. His television show, Diving for Roman Plunder, popularized the wreck for the new age. Number 10. City of Heracleion In 2000, the lost city of Heracleion, Egypt's once largest harbor, was discovered underwater after more than 2,000 years. Its basis dates back to the 12th century BC, and it has strong ties to ancient Greece. According to archaeologists, the city flourished in the dying days of the pharaohs before being devastated over time due to a mixture of earthquakes, tsunamis, and rising sea levels. The massive buildings of Heracleion crumbled into the river at the end of the 2nd century BC, most likely due to a major flood. During the Roman era and the beginning of Arab domination, some of its residents remained in what was left of the city. Still, by the end of the 9th century AD, the rest of Heracleion had sunk beneath the Mediterranean. Many of its unfathomable treasures have since been exhumed from the weary depths to which they were banished and displayed worldwide, allowing us to see into the ancient Greek and Egyptian worlds. Heracleion, also known by its Egyptian name Thonis and sometimes referred to as Thonis Heracleion, was an ancient Egyptian port city on the Mediterranean Sea, 32 kilometers, 20 miles, northeast of Alexandria. Its ruins are buried under 10 meters, 30 feet of water in Abu Kir Bay, 2.5 kilometers off the coast. Number 9. The Sunken Roman City of Baia Baia was the Roman equivalent of today's hedonistic Las Vegas, but its ruins are now partying, catered to the recreational whims of the Roman elites affluent and powerful. The city, built on top of natural volcanic vents, was known for its curative medicinal hot springs, which were found throughout the city and were very easy to construct spas upon. 
Nero, Cicero, and Caesar were among the important leaders of antiquity who visited the city, and a number of them established permanent summer houses there. Unfortunately, the good times did not last, and in the 8th century, the city was sacked by a Muslim force. The ruins of the once opulent town had been abandoned by 1500. After the city ruins were demolished, the water levels slowly increased due to the same volcanic eruptions that drew people to the area in the first place, and most of the ancient ruins were submerged in the bay's shallow waters. The ancient ruins of Baia can now be seen at one of the few underwater archaeological sites in the world. Visitors may see the city's crumbling structures and remarkably well-preserved statues from glass-bottom boats, snorkeling, or even scuba diving, allowing people to swim amid the ruins. While the city is no longer a tourist destination, its waters continue to amaze. Number 8. Japan's Lost Atlantis Submerged stone structures off the coast of Yonagumijima are the ruins of a Japanese Atlantis, an ancient metropolis sunk some 2,000 years ago by an earthquake. This is what Masaki Kumura, a marine geologist at the Japan's University of Ryukus, he's been diving to the location for almost 15 years, measuring and charting its formations. Every time he travels to the dive boat, Kumura claims he is more convinced than ever that the remnants of a 5,000-year-old metropolis lie underneath him. The tallest building appears to be a sophisticated, monolithic, stepped pyramid rising from a depth of 25 meters, 82 feet. Like those of previously buried city myths, Kamiri's assertions have sparked debate. The finding triggered a dispute about whether the structures were formed naturally or by an ancient civilization. The multitude of characteristics that allude to human influence leads many people to assume that the monument is more than just a large chunk of rock underwater. There are what appear to be two pillars, a stone column, a 33-foot wide wall, a road, and even a star-shaped platform. If the monument were built or altered by humans, it would date back to the last ice age, circa 10,000 years BC, when sea levels were 40 meters. Number 7. Turtle Graveyard a diver discovered turtle skeletons lying intact in an underwater cave. While on vacation in Malaysia, Josh Vergara, 34, discovered a mausoleum of dead turtles on Sipadan Island. The skeletons of the creatures are spread across the Indian Ocean's bed in eerie photos of the one-of-a-kind boneyard. Vergara believes the turtles became disoriented in the caves and died of suffocation due to a lack of oxygen. There is also an intact skeleton of a dolphin that could have been disoriented in the same way. The theory that the sea turtles went to breed has been refuted previously, as they hatch on the island, not in caves. Turtle Tomb in Sipadan is the world's only known turtle burial. Turtles frequently visit the cave system to breathe. However, after becoming disoriented in the cave, they eventually find a spot to lie and rest for all of eternity. Number 6. Mysterious Purple Orb the purple, spherical organism appeared to shine under the submersible's lights more than 5,000 feet below the ocean's surface in a canyon off the coast of Southern California. The gigantic sponge was photographed at a depth of around 7,000 feet off the coast of the Hawaiian Islands northwestern in the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. A minivan-sized sea sponge was discovered in the ocean's depths off the coast of Hawaii. As the camera on the submersible went over a crab where the tiny orb hovered near a ledge, one researcher inquired, what is that? Another said, I'm stumped. I'm not sure. I can't even make an educated guess. A third inquired, are we going to grab it? The crab scuttled towards the cliff after being scared by the submersible. Unless the crab gets it first, says the narrator. The sphere was knocked loose by one of the crab's wiry limbs, but it hung steadfastly in place. According to one researcher, it could be related to plankton, specifically kinds that are lumpy and thick like that. Another experimented with an egg sac of some sort, containing a small embryo type thing. One scientist stated, with the lasers next to it, it looks like a disco ball right now. The purple mystery had been delivered from the depths to the waiting ship ship above. Number 5. Sea Spider Sea spiders are properly called pycnogonids because they belong to the phylum Anthropodes class Pycnogonida. They are arthropods like the land-dwelling spiders after which they are named, although they belong to the class Arachnida. Sea spiders and spiders are not the same organisms, despite their similarities. Sea spiders are thought to number in the thousands. They can be found all across the ocean, although they are especially common in polar regions. They can be found in tidal pools, where they are also so little that they are difficult to spot, and on the deep sea floor, they can grow 
to over 50 centimeters, 20 inches, a crucial adaptation that allows them to deal with the harsh environment. Sea spiders are also known as pantopods since they belong to the panthopoda order, all legs. They use their legs to stroll along the seafloor and even swim or tread water above it. They don't have all of their legs, but they do have many, typically eight. They also have short trunks that some of their organs reach into their legs. Additional appendages are employed for cleaning and wooing and by males to transport maturing eggs and their progeny. Sea spiders don't have lungs and rely on their exoskeleton for oxygen. They could be blind in the deep water. Most sea spiders are carnivorous, eating soft body invertebrates such as anemones, rhizoans, hydroids, worms, and corals. Some are known to also dine on algae. They suck biological fluids from their prey through their proboscis, a tube-like mouth that is typically longer and larger than their body. Sea spiders are understudied despite their widespread distribution and depth in the ocean. There is a lot to discover about these interesting aquatic arthropods. Number 4. Ghost Fleet of Truk Lagoon Allied bombers bombed the beaches of Caroline Islands in the South Pacific. The lagoon was home to Japan's Imperial Fleet during World War II, which was destroyed after Operation Hailstone, also known as Japan's Pearl Harbor. Hundreds of Japanese aircraft and other military machines remain at the lagoon's bottom today, making it one of the world's top World War II wreck sites. In a surprise attack on the islands on February 17, 1944, five fleet carriers, four light carriers, support ships, and 500 aircraft descended. The Japanese military had sent extra ships to the area just a week before the raid, and as a result, roughly 250 Japanese aircraft were destroyed, and more than 50 ships sunk. An estimated 400 Japanese soldiers were slain in one ship alone when they were trapped in the cargo hold. The majority of the fleet remained in the same location where it was abandoned, mostly forgotten by the rest of the world until the late 1960s. The wreck littered lagoon was studied in Jacques Cousteau's 1969 film Lagoon of Lost Ships, and many of the sunken ships were still full of bodies at the time. Japan launched recovery efforts when wreck divers raised attention to the location, and several deaths have been retrieved and returned to Japan for burial. However, a few persist. Number 3. Giant Black Smoker Hydrothermal Vent As the minerals precipitate, a solid structure known as a vent chimney forms on the seabed surrounding the venting fluid. A hydrothermal vent is a crack on the seafloor that discharges geothermally heated water. Hydrothermal vents are typically found near volcanically active locations, spreading centers, ocean basins, and hot spots where tectonic plates move apart. The hot seawater picks up dissolved gases and minerals through the crust. The superheated water finally begins to travel back up to the bottom, where it's released through a vent due to the fluid's high temperature. When the heated fluid erupts from the sea floor, it mixes with the colder waters around it. Minerals dissolved in the heated fluid begin to precipitate out of the solution. The areas around subsurface hydrothermal vents are physiologically more productive than the rest of the deep sea. Frequently housing complex ecosystems are driven by chemicals dissolved in the vent fluids. Chemosynthetic bacteria and archaea support a wide range of species, including giant tube worms, clams, limpets, and shrimp at the bottom of the food chain. Active hydrothermal vents are predicted to occur on Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus, and ancient hydrothermal vents are known to have existed on Mars. Number 2. Brinical, Icy Fingers of Death According to a study, when sea ice in the Arctic and Antarctic regions freezes, salt and other ions normally found in salt water are left behind. Brine, concentrated salt water, collects in the sea's ice fissures and channels. Brine freezes at significantly lower temperatures and remains liquid until the ice splits, and the brine flows into the ocean beneath it. The ultra-cold brine falls to the ocean floor because it is heavier than water, freezing whatever salt water it comes in contact with. The brinicles have a finger-like form as a result of this. Initially discovered in the 1960s, the downward-facing brinical ice tubes have been compared to hydrothermal vents, which are thought to be the cradles of life on the Earth. Earth. Ion rich hot water expelled from the sea floor creates a porous metal tower that grows upward, forming hydrothermal vents. Water rushes through the tower, causing it to burst and grow with additional metal rich water. Brinicles, like hydrothermal vents, may have played a role in the genesis of life. You have a significant concentration of chemical compounds inside these compartments inside the ice and lipids, fats, that coat the inside of the compartment. These can function as primordial membrane, which is one of the requirements for life. Number 1. Treasure found on U.S. Ship of Gold 
After more than 150 years at the bottom of the ocean, more than $50 million worth of gold bars, coins, and dust, dubbed the largest lost treasure in US history, is poised to make its public premiere in California. The 3,100 gold coins, 45 gold bars, and more than 80 pounds, 36 kilograms of gold dust salvaged from the SS Central America steamship wreckage are being stored in a makeshift laboratory outside Los Angeles. Bob Evans, the chief scientist on the 1988 expedition that discovered the ship wreck and its riches is now meticulously cleaning each piece of gold by hand, soaking it in a solution and brushing away rust and filth that developed while the treasure rested 7,000 feet 2 meters, below sea level. Those items and substances are values from a long time ago, but they have remained intact since 1857, when Central America sank in a hurricane off the coast of South Carolina in 1857. It was laden with gold from the California Gold Rush. Hundreds of people drowned, and thousands of pounds of California gold were lost, resulting in a financial panic. If you're not familiar with these discoveries, don't be surprised if you think it's just an oddly shaped object below the water surface. Two thirds of all under ocean things have yet to be discovered. Maybe you will get to discover the next.